The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. Everybody and welcome to my brother, my brother, mean advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I be your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. Yeah, yo, good day. Uh, hail and well met. I'm your youngest. Don't love Harold. <laughs> don't love this. Griffin. <laughs> I don't love it. Well, we're so, high. We're high in the fantasy spirit because we've just returned from the biggest nerd event of the year. Good. Uh, gentle folk. <laughs> Folks, the rumors are true. The meek have inherited the earth. Oh, wow. <laughs> These nerds, <laughs> they're running the show. <laughs> oh, I see. Uh, I looked for a solid week for someone to talk to me about sports. Yeah. You uh, you remember that poster that was hanging up on like high school walls? It's like, don't get made. If you get made fun of now, don't worry. You'll be Steve Jobs. Oh, I saw hundreds and thousands, hundreds of thousands of Jobses here. Everyone was a Steve Jobs. Yeah, Jobs is Jobs is everywhere, but not as basketball to drink. Did you guys have any make any new, uh, you know, big celeb friends? That's why you go you go to you go to Comic Con for the connections. You know what I mean? Yeah, you brush elbows with Arrow. Yeah, you brush elbow, you brush shoulders with Flash. I met Spider-Man, um, got a photo uh, with Spider-Man. Yeah. Spider-Man came to our signing. Yeah. And yeah. I said, and he said, thank you, it's so, such an honor to meet you. And I'm like, are you kidding with me right now? After you're, all you've done? You're the web slinger. After you're all your good lab. work. I left. Here's how, co- what's cooler than being at a cool party? Ice I'll cold. Leaving a cool party. I left... Uh, Comic Con's most exclusive event to go home and, and eat a muffin top, a cap, a, a chocolate muffin top, and, and uh, a drink of vitamin water in my hotel room while I play Dragon Quest Builders. That's Fuck kind yeah, of the dude. most nice. exclusive. The most exclusive party is the one you leave. It was I've never seen anything like it before in my entire life. There were famos littered. <laughs> Strewn about, mm-hmm. I, I I stepped over. Uh, uh, I stepped over the corpse of Stephen Amell. He was just there. There's like thirty arrows there. Mm-hmm. I was pushed. Uh, I was playfully pushed into the pool by Tay Diggs. Mm-hmm. But then I bounced off of Cuba Gooding Jr., who was in the pool, to land on the other side without getting wet. So many famouses. Mm-hmm. And you're over there, and you got caught by John Cryer. And John Cryer said, John you Cryer made it to was the other side. actually, that's not a joke. He was there. Yes. He was and you can there. tell that he when was... John Cryer said the thing about making it to the other side, he meant both literally the pool and figuratively to the other side of to fame. To the other side of fame. And now it, we're all famouses. I Do you would know say... what people won't tell you about red carpets? And this is probably not for everyone. I've only been to one red carpet event my entire life. Well, the Margaritaville was a blue carpet, but this We've is a We've only red been on event. one side. Uh, yes. You only are there. You could just walk in. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a door that you. This is Entertainment Weekly thing, and it was an honor. Wow, what an honor! Wow, to be what an honor! H O N O R. So anyway, we went, and you go in, and they're like, "Well, there's the entrance, and then over there is where the red carpet is." And to go on it, you have to wait in like a line, mm-hmm. and this line is like. There's some people from the new Spider-Man movie in this line. John were, Cryer is in this line. We were ahead of the Happily. Spider-Manses. The Spider-Manses was behind us. So yes, we not not a Spider-Man, but like some cast members from Spider-Man. Legit. I mean, 
top top tier talent that I honestly earnestly suggested we should let them go in front yes. of us. There's no way that we should be. But you could just go into the party, which is what a lot of people were doing. They were, we there just were five kind of, minutes less of canapes for the cast of Spider-Man because they had to wait for us to finish getting our picture taken. Strange but true. I did enjoy uh, making good, good friends with David Harbour. Um, now we didn't, mm, we didn't talk. Yeah. Uh, and we were only in the same place for like half a second as he got into a car, as we got out of a car, but I felt him like register, like my celebrity musk on the air. And mm. like I re registered his, and I think he was like, there's another like big bearded Man, sure, here. yeah. I saw it, Trav, as he was getting in the car, and he, you guys like met eyes and just walked by each other, and he tickled you real yeah. fast. He and tickled you real quick. Real like. quick, he and I took a second to bully Tom Hiddleston for being a nerd. It was so fast. It was so fast. Yes, but like that was the only connection we made. Just real quick, me and David Harbour bullied Tom Hiddleston, and then Dave Harbour had to go, but he did. He kissed me on both cheeks and said, now the power is yours. We were standing outside this party, waiting for the person that was supposed to get us into the party. And we were waiting there, feeling like we didn't belong. And as we're standing there, feeling incredibly uncomfortable and really not of a place where we should be there at all, uh, Tom Hiddleston, TV's Loki, <laughs> walks out. Of TBS's this place. Is Loki. TBS's Loki walks out. <laughs> And walk past us and get to get into his car. And I, I asked Griffin, I said, I hope he doesn't, he didn't eat all the free hot dogs that they had. Because <laughs> he had that sort of self satisfied grin on his face that he always had, yeah. which I'm assuming is because he ate all the free hot dogs. And he kept patting car. his tummy and saying, Yum, yeah. yum, hot dog tummy. <laughs> yum, yum, and Wiener then I, King. I, and then I did a fun accent where I was like, They got split top buns, they got <laughs> brioche. <laughs> they got a new topping only famos know about. They got Hot Dogs 2, the sequel to Dogs. Yeah, that was fun. fun it wasn't time. fun. Had it wasn't fun. Oh. <laughs> Maybe for Travis it was fun. Maybe it was you had way fun. fun for me. Good. I'm glad you all received energy from it instead of having it depleted from you like a vampire. I expected to be arrested. Like, that's where I was at as I, yes. as I was walking around this party. I fully expected a helicopter to swoop in and arrest me. They wouldn't even send an officer. They would just kind of scoop me up with a big claw. And mm. then they would like, lower like one of those uh, like things that they use to rescue people who have been injured in the desert. Yes, except it's got a trapping claw on it. It would swoop down and grab me. And as I flew away, Darcy Carden would wave to the helicopter and be like, thank you. Thank you. He was eating all the hot dogs. <laughs> he ate all the hot dogs. Um, we saw so many guys. This was a wild one. This was a wild week. I hope this doesn't come off as bragging. No, I don't. I don't we you did know, not belong. We did no. not belong there. We were like the kids in the mixed up files of Mrs. Baisley, Frank Weiler. We were hiding in the museum, just hoping <laughs> the security guards did not catch us as we ate from the vending machines to stay alive. Dad had a dad added a fun la layer oh, of difficulty yeah. to it. Yeah, we played hard mode. Dad, we did play hard <laughs> new game plus yeah. because dad has a tick, <laughs> which makes him legally, whenever he sees a, a famous person, he has to loudly announce their name or a role that they are well known and for. And there's fucking Ducky! Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, Dad. he's four feet away from you. <laughs> now, to our credit, and I think that this is a testament today, he did not say there's Ducky. He said, I wonder if he's still bald because he played Lex Luthor. Yeah, yeah. Is what he good, said about cool, John Good Cryer. and cool. And then, and then John got Cryer turned around and said, yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, Clint. <laughs> and, then, and then once we got inside the very crowded party, Dad would just go somewhere. That would just wonder off, and we would have to find Dad because he can't, y'all. He can't party anymore. He can't. He can't party like Ducky do. This I will say this. So Dad uh, introduced himself to Brandon Routh, uh, one of the Supermans, 
And then later in the evening, uh, our friend Sarah Benincasa introduced me to Brandon Routh. And Brandon Routh said, oh, that was your dad. <laughs> and like remembered <laughs> our he father. He did Sarah for you. And in, 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 there's two places where you, Travis is known as uh, Max Kid. It's Huntington and Brandon Routh's house. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know my friend, your dad. <laughs> and <laughs> apparently your dad, so- your, dad told me later that Brandon Routh said to him like, are you an actor? And dad explained all of his stage work in Huntington, West Virginia. Fuck Brandon yeah. Fuck. Yes. Hell See, yeah. that rules. I That's wish I had the, the spiritual confidence of my father. Um, yeah. But I mean, like, it was, the whole thing was weird. I, the, I guess it's, it's all, thank you to everybody who came out to like all our signings and bought our new book, The Adventure Zone, Murder on the Rockport Limited, and came to all our events and shows. Like, that's, you're the you are our only you're like our cool friend mm-hmm, that yeah. gets us into parties like i don't know a bunch of other people know who these guys are because we certainly don't um so we appreciate it thank you for making all our lives so strange it feels increasingly like a dare uh <laughs> but <laughs> we, we well they, are, they haven't chickened out yet let's see i don't know maybe no. we'll invite them to i don't know another party with like two john criers and see if they get the hint this time i just want to say this world is bullshit you know this oh, is the fame the world apple. of fame i feel an apple i just wanted to get out there and say like it was a fine party the hot dogs were just scrumptious but uh, this whole world is bullshit and don't let anybody tell you who you to be like Fiona Apple said once. Wow, that's Wait, beautiful. I'm, but Griffin, what if I want to be like a hobnobbing celebrity? That doesn't. That's then you're bullshit. Oh and no! Then, ow! When John Cryer came over, was like, "Hey, I met some of your families. I, I hear you do a podcast. That sounds really interesting. You know, I used to play D." And I'm like, "Bullshit, dude! <laughs> bullshit!" <laughs> <laughs> hey, somebody come get Ducky. Brandon Routh is like, hey, me and your brother are literally going out for hamburgers. Do you fuck bullshit, bud? I see through your lies, Superman. And when Melissa Fumero was like, oh, it's so nice to meet you, I was like, yeah, it's nice to meet you as well. I'm a huge fan, and you're super see, nice. He's bullshit, Justin. Not he's like us. In. Sheep and wolf's clothing. I when I met when I met Ashton. I said, who are you in Lion King? And he said, I wasn't in Lion King. I said, then what fucking good are you? <laughs> and I wandered away. No, that and was he good. knew who had the power in that relationship, for that was sure. A good one. That was good. <laughs> I asked everybody what they thought of Lion King or if they were in it. That's the only people I wanted to talk to is people who had seen Lion King or performed in the film Lion King. Mm-hmm. The, the guy did Moana, the musical guy. He came over and I was yeah. like, were you in Lion King? And he's like, Justin, we've been friends for years. It's like, I don't have any friends that didn't work on Lion King. Yeah, yeah that was go true. See he Lion started King. crying. That he was, started yeah, crying. He was hurt. Because I was, really then, I was like, I was like, Lion King's the only part of this whole, and I pointed to everybody at the party, world that isn't bullshit. It's the only legit one. And then Seth Rogen was like, I was in Lion King. And that's when dad started screaming, are you Nathan Lane? Mm-hmm. Are you Nathan Lane? Like, in his face over and over and they again. pushed him over the balcony. I do want to say one other thing about this before we move on to this intolerable section of the podcast. At, at a separate after-party event that was not really a party, but was just a bunch of us sitting around uh, at a bar, Griffin did, during a particularly heated round of Uno, Hadouken an entire beer onto Lin-Manuel Miranda's pants, which I mention only because... It's the exact thing you're worried about happening at these other parts. Like, <laughs> you're not going to do something worse than that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, the worst thing had already happened to you, which you 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 had, you uh, spin kicked an entire beer onto this poor gentleman. It wasn't a Hadouken. It was a it was a closed fist punch <laughs> into a beer glass because I got excited about a card I had to play. And there it is. There's the truth. And like, we squash that beef right away. We traded pants. Okay. Uh, okay. Moving on. This is an advice show. It's not just a San Diego Comic Con recap. A famous. Nothing you just heard was a brag. It killed all of us a little <laughs> bit, except Travis. Yes. Even no. Even empowered. I was not bragging. I have been uh, in a cocoon for the last like three days. Yeah. Just recovering from having to talk to so many people. Travis did force himself into a picture with Kristen Bell and that came back true. to us and was doubled over <laughs> with the exhaustion of the effort. It took all of his power. <laughs> or maybe Kristen is a Shang Tsung 
and just got a little bit of that soul. Just just got it, pulled it right in. If so, she's welcome to it. She yeah. now she's given us all so much. Eat my soul, Kristen Bell. Yes, it's an advice show. And we help you, the listener, with your queries. You can send those, because I don't think we've mentioned this in a couple of years. <laughs> you can send those to <laughs> mbmbam at maximumfund.org. Real queries for advice only, please. I'm a pizza delivery driver. And every time I deliver to a certain bar in town, they tell me I have to dance or they aren't going to tip me. <laughs> I really need the wow. money, so I humored them the first time. And now they ask every time, and I deliver there twice a week. How do I get them to stop asking me to dance? Is there any way I can get a tip without dancing? And that's from Ben Vereen. <laughs> no. <laughs> Mine would have made a lot of, that would have made a lot of sense. It's from Two Stepping in Texas and not Ben Vereen. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think this is the wildest and worst bar. This yes. is a bad bar. That's I mean, what it, that's what it says outside. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a two step bar. So, may, I mean, they probably play it off like they're chill, like, hey, come on in, honky tonk, ba donk, a donk, and step this way and then this way. And that's apparently dancing. Now, you do it, or else we will suspend your ability to pay bills this month. It, it <laughs> seems like. This is like one step removed from like the outlaw gang in town firing their pistol at your it feet to make sounds, you dance. Yeah, uh, it's a you lot want like three dollars. You're going now, let to me have ask to you, dance. Let me ask you a question. Every time you pull up to this bar, do you knock over all of the motorcycles lined up outside, mm, and okay. then and then you do it as a sort of distraction to save your the, hiney? This makes sense. I've seen this before. Yes, that makes sense to me. I just don't dance. Like the next, listen, you got to pull that bandaid off. And then we're like, you got a chance for this tip. You say, no, I don't. I'm an adult. And then that just. doesn't sound like the kind of person you want to party with. Though, yeah. Right? I want to well, be no, able to party with my Or maybe just delivery. say like, my boss said I'm not allowed to dance anymore. <laughs> oh. My doctor said I'm not allowed to dance anymore. I have a condition where I'm not allowed to dance. John Lithgow said I'm not allowed to dance anymore. In town, if you want to leave the town, yeah, I can go. Or if you know Kevin Bacon, town. I could probably make some arrangements. <laughs> uh, you could wear your cleats inside. Ah, fuck the cleats. I can't. <laughs> oh, oh, I didn't know. Ah, shoot! Um, I just came from my big game, and it, before you ask, <laughs> I won the kick. And yeah, I did have a pretty special touchdown dance. I did for ah, damn it. Okay, fine. You can see it. Yes, let's go outside. I'll do my special touchdown dance. And then you've made it worse. Mm. At that point, it's worse because now you have to come up with a special touchdown dance in outside in your cleats. Maybe maybe you get the first move. You get the upper hand and you say, do you want this pizza? You're going to have to sing for it. Oh, okay. And then when they're like, that's ridiculous. I'm paying for it. Then you'd be like, yes, thank you. Now we're on the same page. You take the pizza and give me extra money, please. Just like I gave you extra cheese, you give I, me extra money. There's a this is obviously untenable, but there I am very glad that you mentioned that it is two step, which is a fairly harmless dance. Because if you hadn't included the genre of dance, my like worst fear would be like, yeah, go make it clap out on the floor, and <laughs> um, and then we'll see. Then we'll see. This is uh, miserable. Make that booty tip. clap. And Fucking tip everyone. Tip everyone a hundred percent of the price of the meal every time. This is the new rule. It's rough out there. Unless Tipping rules are easy. Now you just have to put exactly what the thing cost for everything that you purchase and every service. You tip 100% perfect. Easy. Easy to remember. Easy to abide by. It's the by. same number. It's just the same number. And then when the revolution comes, it's all going to work out, baby. They'll Don't remember. worry about yeah. it. And listen, this is just a helpful tip for me to you, who I've been a delivery driver at different places, tipping cash because they have to pay for their own gasoline. Yeah, baby. But then once the revolution comes, that cash is just going to be stinky, dirty paper. Right. Mm -hmm. Correct. There's no and then you're going to want to start paying with credit card. I have a Yahoo here. Can I read it? Yeah, but it's from yeah. Graham. Robux sent it in. Thanks, Graham. It's Yahoo Answers. You. They're anonymous. Uh, Chelsea. Asks, how do I remind myself to eat more kale? I mm. blank. I'll fill it in here. I fucking used to love kale. That's what, it. What happened? 
What did happen? Uh, I've had situations, when I was a kid, I stayed at Granny's house, Mm -hmm. and uh, I had myself a bean lunch, and then I got sick in the toilet, a wet sickness. Do you know what I'm talking about? (laughs) Yes. And then I didn't, Uh, I didn't, uh, yes, sir. I didn't eat beans for like, no joke, six or seven years after that, because I thought I was allergic to beans. People would ask me, do you have any allergies? And I would say, well, yes, I do. Beans. And they would say, are you positive? And then I would tell them the story that uh, preceded this explanation. Griffin, that's wild. <laughs> yeah. That's you have, wild. If you have a bad food time, you don't want to eat that food again. That's what I'm but saying. But that's not the same as being allergic to a food. No, I know. I was wrong. I'm not allergic to beans. Now I bean it up all the fucking, all day long. Yeah. Get off my thing. Get back onto the question. Okay. So you're thinking that this person ate a kale lunch and had a bathroom uh had a had a wet sick yeah <laughs> and that made them like stop eating kale and then they just went like oh man i should eat some kale again but every time the opportunity for kale arises they j- just forget they eat something they, else oh yeah. they forget about kale well you can't look at life through the lens of every meal is an opportunity for kale because you will absolutely mm. just wear yourself down to the bone like yeah that. you miss 100% of the kales you don't eat that's yeah. That's what uh, Kretzky said. And that's why he was so fucking yoked all the yeah, time. Yeah, also regular as shit. A little too regular, maybe even. Couldn't make it through a game. Yeah. This person that, fuck- that was his undoing. I fucking used to love kale. How can I remind myself to eat more kale? Tie some kale around your finger. That's a good one, Traff. Thank you. That's pretty good. Ka- kale shirt. Can't get into bed wearing that. Oh, Tommy. yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe like uh, hang some kale from the <laughs> ceiling that you have to walk through to get to bed. And then just- You should have kale uh, barriers on stuff. Yeah. Like if, if you had a kale rope tied around every <laughs> toilet that you had to gnaw your way through yes, before you yes. could use the bathroom, I love that. Just a big sheet of kale over the bathroom door that you have to eat your way through like you're in Metroid. Yes, hire a company to kidnap you and bury you in kale and you have to eat your way out. That's good too. Okay. If Mark Summers would just put the flag in a big pile of kale mm-hmm. and you had to eat your way into the pile to win double there, I feel like that that is something. Welcome yeah. to super healthy, super clean double dare. First, you're going to go through this bath and then you're going to eat some kale and get in some jammies and go to bed. And now listen, it's going to get, pr- I point of order, it will get super sloppy, just not during the show. Yes. Post-show is going to be an, an, an unfortunate sloppy situation. Yeah. At, at Double Dare, after dark. <laughs> uh, yeah. Double Dare uh, nights. <laughs> I wish there was such a thing, and bear with me here, fellas, because it's going to- As Double Dare nights, a detective that, show starring Mark Summers. Yes. <laughs> Looks like this one got a little too sloppy. He shoots someone in the head, he's like, I'm sending you. To space camp. (laughs) (laughs) This is going to get kind of cerebral. Okay. I I wish there was such a thing as an edible tattoo. Okay. Well, I'm getting comfy. Okay, go Go on, Wonka. It is kind of Wonka-esque, but like, you if you like kale, I can't. If you were to ask me, Griffin, sit down in front of a Google Doc and type out every kind of food that you like. I would get the easy stuff first, pizza, taco, meatballs. Um, <laughs> but then, like, if you ask me to keep going, uh, I like broccoli okay. Like, a list, a ranking even of my favorite foods, I couldn't do it. And so what if every time you tried something and you were like, oh, my God, what is that? And somebody's like, that is ceviche, my man. I'll be like, get out the pen. And then I would tattoo it in my arm. So anytime I got hungry, I could look down and be like, ooh, what is that? Oh, that's right, ceviche. What did ceviche taste like? And then you give it a little. (laughs) I think you're really close to auto cannibalism, Griffin. No, you don't eat it. You don't eat it. You don't eat it. You don't eat it. You lick it. You understand. You understand that you have gone into human evolution and have basically replaced memory our ability to remember yeah with a fun fruit snack for the whole family not a fruit this is what you're saying you're trading memory for the ability to eat your own flesh no i'm saying you trade off 
Now I don't have to keep my favorite foods inside my brain. I keep that on my arm. Now my brain has more room for the 800 Pokemon that exist. And we can get super hyper-concentrated flavor ink, right? And you'll be like, yeah, let uh-huh. me get ceviche, but do it in ceviche-flavored ink. And so they would do it, and it would be really fucking concentrated, so it lasts a long time. But you will have to get a re-up every, like, three months or so. Now, how do you We decide- all assumed flavor ink, Griffin. I mean, we all assumed that. Yeah. That okay. was obvious. Yeah. How, how, how do you determine, like, how much do you have to like a food for it to- Is it, like, the more you like a food, the bigger the tattoo is? Does every food get a spot? Or is it like I think it's got to be quick, right? I think every restaurant has to offer the tattoo service. Um, oh, but that's awkward. They're going to come over and be like, "So, do you want a tattoo of our world famous fries or not?" But you didn't like the fries. I didn't. The truffle oil wasn't no. So, no tattoo for me thing. No, I think the tattoo would be extremely rare. Somebody eats these these truffle fries and they go yummy, and then they <laughs> and then they just bring out the whole cart and get them going and get it mm. on the arm. It can, mm. doesn't have to go on the arm, but it does have to go on a lickable body part. Yeah, so, it can't be the elbow or like the earlobe. Yeah, or your own, uh, your own butt. You can't lick your own butt. <laughs> Haven't tried. Do it now. Uh, nah, nah, Coward. nah, nah. Well, I can't. I can't eat ass while I podcast, Trav. <laughs> 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 Fucking eat ass while you podcast seems like a t-shirt. <laughs> It should have a big fucking eagle on it giving you a rat thumbs <laughs> thumbs up and side Or it could be it like says, the it could be like the keep calm and carry on, which just says eat ass and podcast. <laughs> <laughs> big dogs is back with a thrilling oh, new line. Shit. That's our new podcast merch is just gonna be big dogs inspired collection. Oh my god. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh let's should we do one more little question? Yeah, I got one here for you. My partner and I are out for dinner at a local pizzeria. This is our second uh pizza themed question. Listen, our sometimes third. I put together a question list when I'm hungry, okay? Don't yeah. we don't need to identify uh, that. Okay, so the place is somewhat trendy and caters to young, hip clientele. We've already ordered, and we're told it might be a 30-minute wait. The people at the table next to us just left, leaving behind three untouched slices of pepperoni pizza. No! Next question. No. (laughs) Next question. My partner and I are both quite hungry. It's a busy night. We would almost certainly be seen by other diners if we went for it. Should we grab the pizza before someone comes to clear the table? And that's from Pining for Pizza in Little Rock. And they have decided to, to solve this immediate problem by sending an email to a weekly podcast. And I'm, I salute you for that. Now, first and foremost, I want to go ahead and get out of the way. Food waste is a real issue in our country. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes Travis. Travis. Why is it Griffin weird to eat that pizza that no one else is going to take on the table? It's not suddenly like if they were still sitting there and they picked like the people who are at that table picked up one of those three slices. No one else in the restaurant would be like. Ew! But if you reach across a two foot gap to grab that piece of pizza, you're a monster. You have to assume. Okay, if you, I want to take the social thing out of it. I always, everyone is always assuming that they're fucking up, and everyone also assumes the assumption that everyone makes is that everyone else knows what they're doing, and it's a faulty supposition but it's one we're constantly making on a subconscious basis you have to work extremely hard to make people think you don't know what you're doing if you walk over and you pick up some za off a table that was abandoned by some other people everyone will just assume it was agreed upon beforehand like they texted you they're your cousin it could be anything everyone will just take that aspect out of it so then we're left with like a hygiene question right that that is that I think is more debatable. Uh, no, I mean hygiene's not a question for me. Hygiene's not a question. This is good oh. pizza, folks. This is good pizza, folks. It's not like they slobbered all over it. Maybe they did, but you got to just sort of play the odds when you're um, doing stuff like this. Food waste is a problem, Travis. Yes, and we are ba- we're basically we're all basically already a bunch of just dirty dogs. So yeah. 
Just go for it. Go for it. Go eat this. And if somebody gets on you, just like throw them a newspaper uh, and say we're all we're all already dirty dogs. So it doesn't. It oh, really wait, are doesn't you matter. Throwing, are you throwing the newspaper in like a fetch kind of way? It can be a joke like that, yeah. But I do. They do need to read it and then read it front to back. And I don't know where you live, but you're gonna make it to the end of that newspaper and be like, well, "Damn, we're all dirty dogs." So it doesn't matter if you eat the scraps. Does it? Well, I think the only concern would be that you might get asked to leave the restaurant. But I also don't think anyone working at the restaurant would want to do that. Like, they'd have to walk over and say, did you eat the pizza off that table? And you would say, no. And they would say, okay. (laughs) And then they'd leave you alone because that is as much confrontation as any human being ever wants. Now, unless they, unless, sorry, I gave you the window. Oh, unless. Justin, you still there. You got to leave. You can't leave me with unless. unsatisfied. Unless they unless. unless they wanted to eat that pizza in the secret now, back. that is the thing. That and that's is the, the thing. thing. Mm. Juice, when you worked at the OG, were you- I did. Were you snarfing down soup salad, bread bowl, breadstick, whatever? I got hired. I got hired at the OG as a dishwasher. So, yes. And I I went back to to, wa- to meet the man who would be training me. I watched him pick up a cup of minestrone off a plate and fucking jam it like a shooter. I think. And then that, then he asked, what department are you working in? And I said, I'm a line chef. Yes. <laughs> because I couldn't, I couldn't study under this man, even though I celebrate him yeah. for that, I couldn't live up to this person. So I lied and said I'd been hired as a chef. Yeah. And that's how I got to be a chef at the Olive Garden. That anecdote i've told yes probably 30 times yes i've never gotten more than a polite chuckle but i submit that if i did become a chef in my life but after that it would be an extremely good story yeah 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 i'm just saying the value of the story is diminished because i worked there for a month and quit because i was tired of stinking of god you smelled so bad you smelled like fucking van helsing you just smelled so much of the garlic can i would like to pitch a new idea uh okay. re- just i recently uh while in san diego went to a breakfast place and i got some pancakes and as is always the case they brought me three huge flappy jacks and i only wanted one and I kept oh. thinking, I should have asked around first to see if anyone around me was thinking of ordering the same pancakes. And I could have just like, I don't know, ride shared these pancakes with people sitting around me and said like, I only want one of these three. Does anybody else just want to go ahead and eat one of the other ones? And then I don't have to feel bad about ordering them. <sighs> I'm saying maybe we ride share pancakes from now on and pizza too something that comes in easily dividable you know like let's let's hey when you're here your family let's treat it like mm. family and share our fucking pancakes and pizza but just that um let's take a break from this thank god it's all very good i love this <laughs> but let's take a break to talk about the money zone. Ring, 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 ring. Who's there? Who's there? Whoa. I should, I should have let you do it. Yeah, ring, were ring. you calling yourself? Ring, 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 ring. Don't answer it. Ring, 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 ring. It's him I'm again. No, it's him again. Fine. Yeah, don't answer Oh, no, it. this is a, sorry, this is a doorbell. They're just ringing it in a pattern that makes it sound like a telephone. Okay, ring, try ring. it again. We'll get it. Yeah, we'll get it this time. Ring, 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 ring. No, no thank you. We're good. Thank you. Why don't you look at see, the app and see the camera and see who it is? I did, <laughs> and it was you, Uh-oh. so you were dismi- we sent you straight to a voicemail, Uh-oh. which is the modern, sort of fun, kicky way of saying we didn't answer the door. All right, we well, I guess I'll it. take this big briefcase full of money and cereal somewhere else. Ooh. I use the Ring. Ring is a magical doorbell that goes in the front of your door. And okay? no one knows it, how it works. And no one knows how it works, but it has HD video and two-way audio. Uh, you can set motion detection. Someone shows up in front door. You're not only going to get a notification that they're there, you're going to be able to pop the camera open and see, like, what do you want? Like, what are you doing? Who is that right now? 
if you're out and about, I've I've answered my door from across the country before and said, just leave the weed <laughs> under the mat. Uh, it, it keeps uh, uh, one thing that I like about it is that if there's um, I'll just say shit going down in your neighborhood. Uh, there are these like neighborhood safety alerts where you see like, hey, a bunch of people are getting robbed over here. You should like try to stay cool, try to be cool about it and and not. Tell the cops. No, you can't tell. You should tell the cops. But like, uh, you get you get those sorts of neighborhood safety alerts. Uh, they got a deal for our listeners. If you go to ring dot com slash my brother, you can get uh, a special deal on a ring starter kit, which is the video doorbell and a motion activated floodlight ca- floodlight camera. Uh, you can get that starter kit and save like fifty bucks, uh, which is a which is awesome. Uh, and if you want to get some more. Uh, equipment you can also save more at ring.com slash my brother uh i use the thing literally every day uh it is the best and it is available for you now at ring.com slash my brother gonna tell you about blue apron now so here it comes this is the cooking box it's gonna have lots of stuff in it and you're gonna be confused by it why did i just get a big thing of asparagus and meat don't freak out. Look at the box. It has Blue Apron on it. That's how you know that the payload has been delivered. You, it's not a threat. It's not, it's a, not threat a threat. It's not a threat. This is what I'm going to do to you. It is a box that gives you that those ingredients exclusively, meat and asparagus only, and then it teaches you how to use it in all kinds of different ways. That's no, one that's of my not. favorite things about Blue Apron. It gives you all the ingredients you need, none that you don't. There's yeah. never like, what? There's just a zucchini in here. What do I do with it? Fucking there? golf ball no. in here. What uh, the? Zucchini is neither meat nor asparagus. Yeah. And yeah. those are the two things that are available in every Blue Apron box. Yeah. And only those two things. Now, and here's they, what's going to throw you. They have yeah. started offering the Beyond Burger, which is a plant based patty, right? So you're going to be like, wait, is this the burger or is this the asparagus? And you'll never know. Yeah. Yeah. It's confusing. So anyway, they make cooking a sustainable part of your weekly routine, and all their meals are carefully designed and tested by the test kitchen chefs. Boy, I bet that's a good job, snacking around on these good burgers and stuff. They use unique specialty ingredients to bring chef-quality recipes to your dinner table. We've all used it. I learned how to cook from it. It's really, it's the jam. It's the shit. Here's some recipes. Cajun shrimp and corn pancakes with sautéed summer vegetables. Don't mind if I yum. Steaks and sautéed vegetables with cheesy mashed potatoes. Can't guarantee that those are asparagus. I'm looking. They're green and long, so maybe. Maybe. <laughs> anyway, if you want to start making delicious, brag-worthy meals at home without they the They also have sh- stuff that are, like, non-meat-based, just, too. Just throwing that out. You know, yellow tomato and zucchini pasta. And that kind of- Griffin just chose to list off two of the, like, eight different options that both contained meat. But yeah, they're I mean, non-meat options. They look badass. You can check out this week's menu and get $60 off when you visit blueapron.com slash my brother. That's blueapron.com slash my brother. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. Hi, I'm Dave. Hi, I'm Graham. And we're two house DJs who have been trapped inside our drum machine. We love it here, and we'd love if you stopped by and visited us every week on, on Stop, Stop Podcasting, Podcasting Yourself here on MaximumFun.org. We're just a couple of doofuses from Canada. And listen to our show or perish. <laughs> Stop podcasting yourself <laughs> on maximumfun.org. My lord. I yay verily want too much. Huzzah! <laughs> I yay verily want too much. Huzzah! It's a Ren Fair uh, yeah. version of the Munch Squad theme song. It's a podcast within a podcast. Uh, usually I read press releases before I uh, do them, and I'm going to roll the cosmic dice here on this episode of My Brother, My Brother, and Me and tell you about Taco Bell revealing spicy details of its new pop up hotel. Oh my God. Okay. So yeah, so they're getting into hotels with it's called the Bell. Now we've definitely Bell not talked ho- about this before because God, that's weird. Yeah, no, I mean we may have mentioned it, but we didn't have all these fucking spicy details, Trav. The Bell, okay, a Taco Bell hotel and resort opening in Palm Springs in August. It's a limited time experience, but it as this uh, e- 
press release certainly reminds me, all things are limited time. And this is a great application of the time that you have on Earth is to go to the Taco Bell Hotel, which is called The Bell, available for a limited time. Uh, what What is going to make The Bell uh, such, a, such an incredible experience? Is that what I hear you asking? What are your top questions about The Bell? Are you asking us? Oh yeah, no. It was, what, hey, it what, was kind of rhetorical, but I was also curious. What um, is, the are food, there on-site obviously. restaurants? Yes, yeah. thank you. The food, yes. Here's what's gonna be at the the best is Taco Bell, <laughs> and, and there's also an unexpected take on a resort poolside menu. I guess unexpected when you're staying at the Taco Bell hotel means not Taco Bell. So there's the two things you could do there at Taco Bell. And not Taco Bell. So you're looking at maybe um, a toasted cheddar club with hand-breaded crispy chicken, jalapeno, bacon, avocado, sharp cheddar. It doesn't matter. Or an avocado tostada. Okay. Served on local multigrain toast with avocado breakfast radish. So this uh, press release is bold enough to imagine a world where I would be the sort of person that would go to the Taco Bell Hotel and then say, uh, excuse me, is this bread local? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> is this local multigrain toast from the region? But it Think- also implies that there is a person who's like, I'm going to go out of my way to stay at the Taco Bell Hotel but I yes. don't like Taco Bell food. <laughs> it's just right. that it's just closest to my convention. Think outside the bun. Purchase local. Um. So there's going to be a uh, Baja Blast birthday freeze. Uh huh. <laughs> celebrating the 15th anniversary, and it's going to be served in the first ever freeze lounge to keep things chill. Hmm. So I guess this is a very cold lounge perfect for enjoying uh the baja blast i would argue we already have those and they're called morgues yeah but yes. there will be a on-site morgue perfect yeah. for enjoying a baja blast here's a qu- quote i got a quote all right it's from renee piscotti he's the executive chef of the bell they have hell, one of those let's be on- hell yeah let's be honest let's be honest food is the best part of traveling a lot of effort and homework goes into finding out the best places to eat near where you are staying. What is this accent? <laughs> I love it. It's Rene Piscotti. Don't, but don't with Zibel, we thought of everything for you. Do you mean Taco Bell food? <laughs> From welcome beverages to room service to build your own breakfast tacos and surprises throughout. What? Whoa, wait. Me, hold on. You can't just life. say surprises throughout. So surprises without. Uh, many of which feature local ingredients, like our horchata date smoothie. We're curating the ultimate Taco Bell food experience. So the Bell is a hotel that has the bravery to look at the Taco Bell menu and say, well, certainly not this. (laughs) (laughs) Certainly you didn't intend on consuming this. Do you guys know what, uh, I think it's pronounced Halocline is? No. This is when, uh, usually in like an underwater cave, like really salty salt water and fresh water, uh, like refuse to mix. And so it creates like a visible surface from one water to the other that you can see. And I'm wondering if there's one of these at the front door of the Taco Bell Hotel because of how many farts, like concentrated, (laughs) condensed, like (laughs) fart air is in there that you literally can see like a visible air surface uh yes uh welcome to the hotel i do have to warn you our air is flavor blasted so you're going (laughs) to need to wear this special diving mask it's it's local farts (laughs) locally (laughs) sourced farts these are farm to table farts um the fun the fun you ask well they've got the fun while the daytime djs play jams (laughs) this is basically Mm. some someone's nephew hooked up spotify while daytime DJs play jams, surprise performances will kick off after the sun goes down for guests at the Bell. Fans can bring home the same vibes to their own summer plans with curated playlists from Feed the Beat artists, a Taco Bell program that has helped more than 1,600 artists and bands discover new fans. Mm. Huh. Mm. Ah. 
And ladies and gentlemen, coming back to the stage for the fourth time today, Eddie Money. <laughs> Eddie's back. Eddie's back. Hey, what's up? Yeah, they asked me to do it again. Uh, and I said, So here I am. I said, You got any more crunch wraps? And they laughed and laughed. Anyway, I've got two yeah, tickets to paradise. <laughs> they didn't answer my question, but I'm, I'm assuming they're out. I want to go to this place with a desire that I'm not sure I can quantify mm-hmm. with the sort of linguistic tools that we trade in on this show. We very rarely get into sort of uh, poetry or or epic uh, narrative at all, and I feel like that's what I would need to sort of communicate the desire with which I really, 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 really want to go to the bell. Yeah. If I may, Justin, I it seems to uh-huh. me to be a bit of a siren song Drawing you mm. into the cheesy ocean to crash upon the nacho rocks. Like, you know it will be your undoing. Yeah. But you're not, drawn to it. <laughs> you're, let me remind you, you're going to have to sleep here. Yeah. <laughs> that is hard. That is hard. The other thing that I'm struggling with is I've eaten at Taco Bell many times. My reaction physically and mentally after that is always, never again. Yeah. I swear to myself, never again. But now I'm sleeping in a place where they make it. Mm. I'm sleeping at the belly of the beast, as it were. That's that's hard for me. That's tough. Can I read a Yahoo? Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah, there's a Taco Bell gift shop, by the way, mm. where you can buy. It's got, I'm looking at right now, a Taco Bell is life tie clip, mm. which imagines a world where you would be someone with a Taco Bell is life tie clip, but also have any use for a tie yeah. at any point in your life whatsoever. Um, well, there's a lot of. I can think of a couple. Okay. Uh, CEO of Taco Bell. <laughs> Court date. Yeah, ba- bail arraignment. <laughs> um, okay. Here is a Yahoo. Gosh, these are all kind of food related. Graham Roebuck also sent this one in. It's a hungry app. It's from Yahoo Answers user Ernesto, who asks Which food awakens the beast inside you? Oh, yeah. Which food awakens the beast inside you? Let's get this out of the way. I have, a, and this will just be a blanket sort of uh, crude humor joke, but I do have irritable bowel syndrome. So you can make an argument that you're describing most foods. More like irritable beast syndrome. That be makes it cooler beast. for sure, for sure, for Yay. sure. You got an irritable beast in your system. It feels like it sometimes, certainly, but let's, so let's not go down that route because I feel like the Taco Bell one used up all of our resources for me oh, it's okay. kale okay when i eat kale i feel like a wild beast that's also true when i eat sticks of cinnamon or rocks here's a here this is gonna complicate things maybe a little bit but are pills food mm. do, do pills count, count as food do they unleash mm. the beast uh, in a manner of speaking i see a beast who's not as anxious as a non-beast is. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> compared, to, compared to what the non-beast is, I am currently, and have been for a while now, beasting the fuck out. So yes, that is true with Travis, uh, anxiety Travis, and mm-hmm. sad Travis, who is yeah. now uh, doing okay the regular, Travis. Regular Travis, yeah. yeah. The fucking beast. <laughs> oh, a wild man who can focus on homework. Yeah, I can. I, I can get out of bed. I'm the beast. <laughs> I Sorry. care more about I the needs know. of others. I want to hear more about Travis's pull of homework. <laughs> Why that's that's relevant to your day to day? That's all that work is now. You know, I work from home. It's all homework now. Dang, Dang that's dude. great. That's so good, dude. But what food makes you go wild with power and fury and you can, like, be stronger because of the food? If I eat the right amount of boneless buffalo wings, I feel that way. The problem Mm. is I don't know what the right amount is and it changes every time. (laughs) It's a moving Yes, One, One too little and I'm still hungry. One too many and I instantly feel like death. Have you guys tried vegetables? Yeah. I every show we've ever done for the past few years, we uh request uh that they put some vegetables backstage. 
And then at the end of every show, we like to take them and float them on the nearest body of water and then shoot a flaming arrow into them and watch as they sail off. And then we say, maybe next show, we'll definitely eat these vegetables. I mean, if it was a bigger tray, we would have eaten it. I mean, I tried one of those orange ones. And I didn't care for it. Oh, one the bit. crunchy boys. Yeah, the crunchy orange ones are no good. I got sinus surgery last year, and while uh, I was going home from the hospital, they had given me a little drink, a little nutritional drink of Boost, and I drank one of those, and I was like, I feel incredible. But I think it might be because I was still high a little bit from the mm. surgery. But that Boost made me okay. feel so good, so I bought like a twelve pack of Boost, and it didn't. It wasn't that good. You know what I like? What I enjoy, which gives me my own boost, TM, is I enjoy a strawberry and walnut salad. It always hits the spot, and I find it crisp and refreshing and filling and gives me the energy I need to get out there. so not the beast right now. (laughs) This is the not. But my beast allows me to finish doing the dishes and maybe stretch a little bit. You know what, I, I tell you what does me right, what makes me feel like I'm getting it done and c- brings out the beast within. Sometimes if I have a really healthy cereal in the house, I'll pour a really small bowl like they do in commercials. <laughs> and I'll kind of like put my leg up on a thin, sort of prop my leg up on a nearby banister like they do in commercials or a big rock. Yeah. And just kind of eat it with my puffy vest and a self-satisfied look on my face. And I really, I like to live in that moment a little bit. This world where I'm just, I'm just having a small bowl of healthy cereal, and I'm about to use this energy to hike. <laughs> uh, I mean, a big bowl of Mama Freddy's Turbo Spaghetti will get there <laughs> for me most. <laughs> Most days, if I need, if I have the like a big event coming up, or I'm about to go on book tour, or I'm about to have like a Comic Con Fred Savage encounter, I will just like I have a little can of Mama Freddy's Turbo Spaghetti with me, and I will just I'll cram it and be ready for the day. I just assume I assumed that was a given. Like I would have said Mama Freddy's Turbo Spaghetti if I'd known, like that it wasn't just assumed. Like yeah, yeah. 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 Well, yeah, I, I edited out the part where I, at the beginning of the question, I said, we're all going to say Mama Freddy's Turbo Spaghetti, so let's just pass <laughs> over that. Uh, is there, is is there, uh, this is slightly changing the, the uh Are there other the questions, brand? Or the inverse. Are there well, there's other... Mama Freddy's Come Down Spaghetti, and that's the only thing that can undo <laughs> is... the turbo energy, or else you'll die. And then there's uh, Papa Cannoli's Turbo Ravioli, which is, okay. it's basically the same thing. Mm-hmm. This is kind of the inverse, but like, do you guys at this point in your lives know that of food, per, perhaps per specific restaurants, that you know 100% if you eat at them, you will be sick? And not like a, if I overindulge, but like 100% if I darken the door there, I'm going home sick. Do you have places like that? Places or meals? Fazoli's. Fazoli's, yeah, is not okay. great for you. Yes. And Long John Silver's. Uh, if you're yeah. gonna go in there, you're gonna leave back. I thought you said restaurants. <laughs> that's that's fair. That's a fair burn on the Long John Silver's plant brand. But that's the thing is, I will say, I love I love quick service food. Love yeah. it. I can't remember no the one, last no time. No one who loves it calls it that. What? Fucking nobody. That's the ultimate ultimate faker. Fake test. But I can't remember the last time I ate like, a fast food hamburger and walked away like, yes, I now really, I'm ready. I really wish I could help make jokes with you guys, but all I can do is sit here and try and think of other members of the canned <laughs> pasta family. <laughs> the best I've got is Grandma Tanya's power lasagna. <laughs> it's not bad. It's pretty good. <laughs> Not, it's not bad. It's f- so full of protein, but not in the places you would expect this power <laughs> lasagna. So do we leave, for the format of the joke, do we leave turbo in? Turbo. No, this is, it's this is of, power lasagna. The yeah. turbo, this is a different, this one's more about, okay. this one's more about okay. gains. Oh, I see. <laughs> okay. Turbo lasagna is speed. This one's about gains. There's probably a smarts one. Yeah, like maybe like uh like cousin Joni's meditative rigatoni. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. That one's about inner peace and mindfulness. That one's about focus. Here's one C- cousin. Uh huh. Jim's. Yes. Good. Uh huh. <laughs> sauce. Ah, so close. <laughs> Almost nailed it. <laughs> it's and, not. And then for uh, adults who need a little bit of help revving their engine. Uh huh. We got Papa Pokey's horny gnocchi. Is <laughs> they're little and it comes in a discreet can. That <laughs> delivered to say, your door in a brown paper package. It does not say it says not Papa Pokey's horny gnocchi. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Jim's uh huh. Nice yes. <laughs> food. <laughs> it's good, Justin. You get it's better than the last one. You're moving in the right direction. Thank you. That's very kind. Thank you. Uh, Folks, that's going to do it for us uh, this week on My Brother, My Brother and Me, a show that we make just for you. Uh, We hope you've enjoyed yourself. Sorry that things have been a little bit scattershot over these past couple weeks and the two weeks to come. It's kind of like wild. Yeah. Wild time with like the book and book tour and Comic-Con and vacation and yes. everything. Speaking so, of which, for hanging in there with us. Speaking of which, next episode will almost certainly be a live show. We have not talked about this, but yeah, there is a, uh, th- th- some of the McRoy's are going on vacation after the book tour and all the touring and stuff. And so I doubt that we will have time to record an episode. So uh, yeah, I assume next one will, will be a live show, but it'll be a funny one. Yeah. Yeah. You'll like it. Uh, or you let's... won't. You know, like, it's a free world. Yes. So uh, thank you to John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of our theme song, It's a Departure, off the album Putting the Days to Bed, which is really good. And uh, thanks to Maximum Fun for having us oh, on the network. Shit, we have the biggest announcement. Oh, shit. Bean Juice is dead. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah. Not dead. Well... But Bean it's Juice, a new... as you know it, is dead. We talk. We fucking talked about. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. We're not spinning it. A fucking debacle. Okay. It is a new era and a fresh face that all our loyal bean heads uh-huh. are gonna go wild for. And it's a better fit for their lifestyle. Okay. And it's gonna be more relatable to them and their friends and their families. It is not. A f- we did not take a bath on this. We are making so much money that we want to cash in. Okay. okay? Right, right, right. Start okay. over. Start over. Uh, Start over. Have we got an offer for you? You're going to be so excited about it. Finally, a mug that keeps up with it. Listen, you loved bean juice, but you couldn't take bean juice on the go because that bean juice mug just wouldn't keep up with your lifestyle. But now, with bean juice 2.0, the new latest and greatest (laughs) version of bean juice, you can take bean juice with you wherever you go. This is a portable mug. Well, Not like our first mug, which you felt weird taking with you on the go. This one, can you'll we try get it. Different. You're like, what, what if I did? It's it. just functionally, it's the same mug. Can it's I take a swing? Let me take a swing at it. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah please. You're still drinking a Bean Juice 1.0 mug? Okay, grand, grandpa or grandma. Uh, don't think so. This one, this is you. Ah, uh, time to sit down with my bean juice mug and pour some of the brown stuff in it. Uh, and you lift it up with your old arm. Uh, I'm gonna put it to my mouth. Hey, what's this? Cup say B in juice. And while you've read that, while it takes you the time to read that, I did a stunt over a vape shop Whoa. and got one already. And I when I landed, I was holding the 2.0 mug, which you can read much faster. How and is- a 2.0 company. It's a it's a rebirth for bean juice. It's still pronounced the same way. Right. Yeah. But the company is now spelled B N J C. It's new. It's so fresh. I know now. you're saying that our stock ticker symbol is B E A N, and so that's going to be very confusing for the investors. But uh, they don't know that vowels <laughs> ain't it. No, we don't care about the investors. It's never been about the money. It's about profits. Yes, that's the only thing that is different from what they don't seem to understand on Wall Street when they're like. We're foreclosing, et cetera, et cetera, unpaid bills, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, right. We don't traffic in money. We traffic in lifestyle. And profits. Profits. And profits we- that we're supposed to be, <laughs> according to DFTBA, 
fucking bulletproof, my man, <laughs> on mugs. Yep. They were supposed to be, the margins on these things were supposed to be outrageous. People use mugs, they said. Over, but That's why Hank, Hank and John blowed a bunch of smoke in our face at the same time and said, these mugs are going to make you guys fucking And when rich. they blew the smoke, it formed the word mugs, and then they <laughs> turned the S into a dollar sign by like, it was blowing so, two so things. Cool. It was cool. <laughs> So cool. And we gave them our life savings to make those mugs, and now they're in Tahiti, <laughs> and we're left with the no <clears throat> Beach Juice Two Point It's the new cool for the for the cool kids. Wait till you see this new design. You're gonna shit. <laughs> uh, anything else? Can we wrap it on up? There's a whole bunch of new stuff coming to the merch store too. You can go to macroymerch.com. Yeah. None of it matters. I'm going to be at Gen Con. Uh, you can check out my Twitter. The banner at the top of my Twitter has all the dates. Dad's going to be there too. You can go to travismacroy.com and it's going to be there as well. And I will see you at Gen Con. Uh, here's a Yahoo that was sent in by, oh, geez, the hat trick. Graham Roebuck, well done. Uh, thank you, Graham. It's anonymous. It, no, it's Yahoo Answers user Bear the Polar Bear who asks, why is Peter Gabriel's voice nice? <laughs> My name is Justin McElroy. Travis McElroy, you caught, caught me drinking on that one. <laughs> I was taking a sip on that one. Coach Billy's football fuzili. Is that anything? <laughs> it's this close. has been my brother, my brother, me. Kiss your dad square on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Hey, James. Hey, Nike. What we doing, girl? We are inviting the awesome listeners of Maximum Fun to join us at Minority Corner. Ooh, fun. But you know how we go on Tangent City. We're the joint mayors. We're not going to do that, okay? Soup's focus. Okay, so Minority Corner is where you can all come and get your pop culture taste. Plus, social commentary, news, and TV movie reactions like Avengers Endgame. No spoilers here. Ooh, snap. Sometimes we dig into the vaults and we review and recap those movies you missed. Gonna at you, Halle Berry's kidnapped. I love how she always gets. 1000%. Like Beyonce. Did you see Homecoming on Netflix? She was burning it down like the mother of dragons. Have you seen the latest Game of Thrones? So good. Only thing missing? More, More black, black people. people. What do you think about Mayor Pete? Wait a minute, James. We went on a tangent? Yes. Ah, well. Join us every Friday for more tangents. On Maximum Fun.